Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to Hales Corners Lutheran Church. I am uh, Pastor Leon. This is uh, Reverend K, not quite Pastor K here quite. just yet. Yeah. A tweener. Uh, between. Between. He's in a between time. Sometime this summer, I think, uh, that'll happen uh, here. And it, uh, gosh, it is gorgeous outside, and I think we took a vote. Um, we're going to go ahead and move out to the parking lot we'll for worship. Stand up and go. Yeah. I'm serious. I'm ready. I, no, we can't do that. We're Lutheran. All right. Yeah, we got to be here. You're right. We do welcome you. If you are a guest here this morning, a special welcome to you. And uh, um, we would love to chat with you if you have questions about the mission and ministry here at, at Hales Corners. A few announcements to share with you. Uh, always remember the welcome that you receive uh, when you walk in that little piece of uh, paper, that booklet that has all sorts of happenings here in ministry. And uh, uh, make sure you look at those for more details. But there's a, a table talk coming up with, with Pastor Joe. And speaking of Pastor Joe, something special happens for him today. And that happens at 3 p.m. He is uh, He's kind of commissioned into, uh, into Link officially. Uh, and that's going to take place at Hope Lutheran. That's on 35th and Highland. And so we invite you to uh, um, celebrate with Pastor Joe as that takes place here today at 3 p.m. if you can join him at Hope Lutheran. Um, also wanted to give you up an update regarding the, uh, the Zivni family. Uh, if you were here last weekend, we took a door offering uh, for them uh, to, to benefit some, some significant challenges that they were facing. Uh, Bettina is our director of uh, communications ministry here and wanted to give you an update. Through, uh, through the door offering that we had as well as their GoFundMe page, um, they have been gifted by God's people almost $30,000. Yeah. And on top of that, Lutheran disaster relief. Uh, they got wind of this, uh, this experience or this moment that the Zivni family was, was living in the midst of. And they stepped forward and said they will match up to $30,000 in donations for that. Oh. So again, the generosity of God's people here at Hales Corners is outstanding. God's word tells us, and when you pray, pray like this. It's a wonderful time that um, Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he makes it really clear. As Christians, guess what we do? We pray. There's a national day of prayer. That national day of prayer is May 5th, and we are inviting you to attend a worship service at 6.30 in the evening to celebrate that National Day of Prayer. We also have a Rhythm and Hum weekend next weekend, and in that Rhythm and Hum weekend, we're going to have a, the Harwood family that's going to join Rhythm and Hum. They are also, the Harwood family is going to hold a concert here on April 24th at 7 o'clock p.m. That, once again, is information that can be found in your bulletin or in your... Um, your welcome folder, welcome. and so go. we just encourage you to not during the do this during the message, but after you leave church to look through all that kind of information. There you go. With the announcements out of the way, we have the joy of standing up and sharing God's love and God's peace with those around us. It's always a scurry, right? It's a great thing. We see you all, and then it's a scurry the minute it gets very serious. It doesn't have to um, become a scurry. Like, it's God's peace and God's joy, and we get to share that. It's a privilege and a blessing to do that. As God's family, we are called and gathered to worship, grow, and be sent to make a difference in the world for Christ. We continue with our call to worship. Great and marvelous are your deeds. God Almighty, just and true are your ways, King of the ages, who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name, for you alone are holy. 
all nations will come and worship you. We continue as we confess our sins and we receive God's forgiveness. God's word assures us, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin before God. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us change what we are and direct what we shall be so that, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening song for this morning is a brand new song for the congregation to be singing, but the praise team has been singing it during pre-service for a few months, so hopefully it's in your ear a little bit. But we'll um, lead you, so I invite you to sing along to God My Rock. Will look to you alone, God, my 
invite you to be seated. We have the opportunity to call upon our, the name of our Lord. We have the opportunity to confess our sins and receive forgiveness from our Lord. We have the opportunity to lift our voices and praise to our God. And now we make it very, very clear who we are here to worship. So there is no doubt um, what the name of God is in this place. I ask that you join me as we affirm our faith and confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture, our verse that we're going to work and memorize this morning is from the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. I ask that you read our memory verse together with me. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. At this point in the worship service, we invite Kevin Ford. Kevin is going to share our scripture reading with us this morning. The lesson is from 2 Timothy chapter 3. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove rebuke and exhort with complete patience and teaching. This is the word of the Lord. This time we'd like to invite the children of the congregation to come forward for a children's message. It's so wonderful to see all of you. I brought a book with me this morning, and so I was going to read a book to you. Does that sound okay? This means yes, this means no. Are you okay if I read this book to you? Yes. Okay, let's, let's begin. Let's begin this book. Let's learn about reptiles. This is Al the Alligator. You know, maybe I should have read this book before. You know what? Um, I actually don't like this page. Just a second. Let's start again, shall we? Let's learn about reptiles. This is Al the alligator. You know what? I actually don't like this picture. Just, uh, just one moment here. Uh, should we start again? Let's learn about reptiles. This is Al the alligator. 
you know, there's a word here that I don't know how to pronounce, so I'm just going just gonna to go ahead and do that. All right. Just be patient. Let's just start over. Let's, let's start new, okay? Here we go. Let's learn about reptiles. This is Al, the alligator. The end. Did you like that story? Now listen, and listen very carefully. I do not tear pages out of books, and you should not go home and tear pages out of your books. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Some people, with God's word, although they may not actually tear pages out of the Bible. Some people, when they read God's Word, they ignore or they move past or they kind of say, this doesn't apply to me. Some people will read God's Word and they'll say, wow, that's kind of hard. I don't think I can do that. That's not an easy thing. And so they say, well, that doesn't matter. I'll just forget that in God's Word. Some people read God's Word and they say, well, this was written like forever ago. That still doesn't apply today. And some people may read God's Word and simply say, I don't understand that, so I'm not going to worry about it. But here's the thing. God's Word says this. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all Scripture is God-breathed. Everyone make a really loud breath for me. (sighs) That was more of a scream, buddy. Let's do a breath all together, a really, really breathy breath. Ready? One, two, three. (sighs) All Scripture, all of God's Word is God-breathed. That means everything in the Bible is from God to you. Everything. Not just the parts that we like, not just the parts that are easy, but everything. Everything in God's Word is for you because God's Word shows us that we're sinners, but God's Word shows us God's great love in Jesus who died for us to take away our sin. God's Word is a great gift. All of God's Word is a great gift for you from God. Let's pray together. Will you guys echo my prayer? Fold your hands and echo my prayer. Dear God, thank you for the gift of your word, help me, God, by your Holy Spirit, to learn and grow and live from what you taught me in your word. Amen. Hey, thanks for coming up. You can go ahead and head back to your families. Finding myself at a loss for words, and the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say. Word of God, speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place, please let me stay and rest in your home. God speak I'm finding myself 
in the midst of you beyond the music beyond the noise all that I need is to be with you and in the quiet hear your voice word of God speak would you pour down like rain washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness word of god speak would you pour down like rain washing my you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness i'm finding myself at a loss for words and the funny thing is it's okay. Will you pray with me? Word of God, speak. In this moment, in this place, at this time, may your word speak to us. And by the power of your spirit, change us from the inside out and change our hearts and our actions. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So a third grade Sunday school class was asked to, to summarize what they had learned over the course of the Sunday school year about the New Testament. And this is what they shared. Jesus is the star of the New Testament. It's a good start. He was born in Bethlehem in a barn. During his life, Jesus had many arguments with sinners like the Pharisees and the Republicans. <laughs> Jesus also had 12 possums. The worst one was Judas Asparagus. <laughs> Judas was so evil they named a terrible vegetable after him. Jesus was a great man. He healed many leopards and he even preached to some Germans on a mount. But the Republicans and all those guys put Jesus on trial before Pontius the Pilate. Pilate didn't stick up for Jesus. He just washed his hands instead. Anyways, Jesus died for our sins, then came back to life again. He went up to heaven, but will be back at the end of the aluminum. His return is foretold in the book of Revolution. We laugh. We laugh, but I wonder. I wonder how many adults would do much better in describing, giving a summary of the New Testament. There was a study done in, in 2012, a research study conducted by the American Bible Society, and it reveals some good news as well as some bad news about biblical literacy and Bible reading in America. Nearly 80% of Americans say that the Bible is the most influential book in human history. And 42% say that the Bible is very important to them. But only 17% of Americans say that they read the Bible daily, and 45% say that they rarely or never read it. Rarely 
or never read it. So where do you fall in that research? I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. God's word for us today from 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17. The Apostle Paul writes, From infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which you are able to make wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Look again at verse 16. Zero in on that verse. All Scripture is God-breathed and is what? All Scripture is God-breathed and useful. Useful. Scripture is useful. If all Scripture is useful, then a life without Scripture is useless. God's Word, the Scriptures, are words of eternal life. They are inspired by God himself. The Holy Spirit of God, inspired, spoke through, carried along a variety of of human writers as they wrote. So what they wrote were not words of man, but words of our divine and almighty God written in the words of men. And because the Bible is the inspired word of God, it is also the revelation of God. It's the revelation of, of God's will for our life. It's the revelation of God's great plan of salvation and love for our lives. It's through Scripture, through the Bible, that God reveals His very essence, His very nature, and His great love for you and I. See, it's God's Word that exposes our sinfulness. It's God's Word that shows us our brokenness. It's God's Word that reveals to us our need for a Savior. And it's God's Word that points us to an all-loving God who provides for that Savior in the person of Jesus Christ. It's God's Word that creates and feeds and sustains a life of faith. It's God's Word that directs us and equips us for every good work. Holy Scripture is from God. It is God-breathed. God breathed. Think about that. Our Almighty God simply spoke, and the universe and everything in it came to be. God simply spoke things into being by the power of His Word. And in Christ Jesus, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus dwelt among us, and when he left, he breathed his Holy Spirit upon us. And the Holy Spirit works not disconnected, not floating aimlessly about, but firmly anchored in the very word of God. God always comes to us in the midst of his word. The Holy Spirit who inspired those original writers comes to us comes to us through the very words of Scripture as we read them, and he goes to work. He goes to work on our hearts, and he goes to work on our actions. Holy Scripture is from God. It is God-breathed. How can we blow off what is God-breathed? How can we blow off what is God-breathed? Because we do. Because of sin in the midst of our lives, we do. We blow off, we look past, we ignore the very words of God given and intended for you and for me. The Apostle Paul, he knew the importance of Scripture. And so he intentionally passed on that that wisdom to a young pastor named Timothy. And Paul did this with intentionality, with with great care, because what was true for Timothy long ago is true for you and I still today. If we're going to follow Jesus, if we're going to be light in this dark and fallen world, then we need to be equipped by God's Word. We need to be taught by God's Word. And at times, we need to be rebuked and corrected and trained, but we need to be rooted in the Word of God. We need to be rooted in this remarkable and unique book. And God's word 
is remarkable and unique. And when you read this remarkable and unique book, remarkable and unique things begin to take place in your heart and in your actions. And so we have to. We have to keep reading. We have to keep studying because the Bible, the Bible is our source of authority. The Bible is our guideline for life. Not Hollywood stars that this world has, has elevated to be moral authorities in our lives. Not, not, not our ever-changing feelings. Not experience. Not tradition. No, the Bible. The Bible alone is our sole source of authority. It is the rock. It is the foundation on which we build our lives. See, God's word directs and guides us in the midst of everyday living. God's word shows us that work is good and how to, to, to honor God in everything that we do. God's word shows us that everything we have is a gift of God and how to be generous with our tithes, with our, with our gifts, with our talents and, and time. And, and God's word shows us. It shows us how to be a husband, how to be a wife, how to be a son or a daughter, a parent, how to be a servant, how to be a leader, how to be a teacher. God's word directs and shows us all these things. So we have to, we have to keep on reading. In those moments in our life when there is joy and celebration, when we're confused, when we're depressed, when we're frustrated, when we're disappointed, we turn to this book. When everything else in life fails, the word of the Lord endures forever. Amen? Since September, we've We've been on this journey together. We've been working through the story. And the story has taken us from Genesis and we are nearing Revelation. We have walked through God's word using the story as our, as our guide. And everything that we've, we've preached, everything that we've taught, everything that you've, you've read has all been focused and intended to better acquaint, better connect you with God's word. But here's the thing. When we finish the story, spending time reading God's word doesn't need to end. It needs to continue because we're, aren't, we aren't finished. We have to keep reading and studying the very word of God. Our, our scripture for today from 2 Timothy was written by the Apostle Paul when he was in a dungeon cell. And the truth that Paul writes to Timothy is a truth that is intended for us as well. Listen again. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Paul wants young Timothy to be effective as a pastor and as a leader in this rapidly growing and changing church of his time. And so he gives Timothy this, this list of very practical instructions. But none of these instructions are more important than what he shares in verse 14. Listen, continue, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. I have the joy of spending time with our middle school students our 6th through 8th graders in our, our Faith Inc. ministry. Our Faith Inc. ministry at Hales Corners is our confirmation ministry. And I spend time with, with 400 of these 6th through 8th graders. And every time we get together, I remind them, I remind these students and I remind their parents that this is simply a stop. This is a moment. It's a part of a lifelong journey of faith. There is more to learn. Confirmation is not a graduation. It is not an ending point. Our life in God's word is lifelong. And this is what Paul is saying to Timothy. This is what Paul is saying to you and I. We need to continue. We need to press on. We need to keep on going because there's more to know. If you've read it once, Read it again because there's more to learn. There's more ahead, rooted, and from God's inspired word for you. God reveals his nature, his plan, his love story for you through scripture. 
It is the authority of truth in this world. It is absolute. It is solid. Something that we look to as a guide for our lives as we live as Christians in this world. But there are so many misunderstandings about God's word. See, for some, the Bible, the Bible is simply an icon in their life. It's this book that they place on the coffee table, and there it stays, never to be open, never to be open and guide in the midst of their life. It's sometimes something that's just passed down from a family member, and it sits there, sits there on the coffee table. For others, the Bible is a, a fortune cookie. It's a fortune cookie. It's, it's something they open and they, they place a, a finger somewhere in God's word and that's what they do. That's what they say. That's how they respond. And, and for others, the Bible is a, a source of proof texting. But it's, it's done with this motivation. It's used to help them win an argument with a spouse or with a friend or with a neighbor, but God, God did not give us the Bible as an icon, as a fortune cookie, as a way to win an argument. God gave us the Bible to reveal his nature and his plan, to reveal Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. The Bible is the most reliable guide that we have in life. And our faith our faith is certain not when it's based on what man says, but it is certain when it is based on the very word of God. And this is why we as Christians see the Bible as so critical in the midst of our life of faith. This is why here at Hales Corners Lutheran Church, we say that the Bible is the foundation, the cornerstone of who we are and what we teach. Because the Bible is light for our path. The Bible gives us guidance in our daily lives, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God comes alive and works in us. It equips us for every good work and act of service. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In our Lutheran churches, when a when a vicar has completed all the necessary requirements to become a, an ordained pastor, there's this thing that, that other pastors do. They gather around the, the man and they, they pray and they speak scripture over him. Scripture intended to, to guide his life and his, and his ministry. When I was ordained back in St. Louis uh, a while back, there, there was this group of pastors from the circuit that, that spoke scripture over me, but there was one individual, Reverend Doug Gaunt that knew me better than anyone else. See, Doug and his wife Carol were best friends, our best friends, with my wife's parents. And so when we were engaged, they became family friends. And so Doug has been an important part in the midst of our life. He was there at our wedding. He was there in the waiting room when our, our girls were born. He was there when we lost a child. He was there at, at birthdays and Thanksgiving meals and, and celebrations. He was there when we, we built a home. He, he spoke a blessing over it. And, and there at my ordination, there at my ordination, Doug spoke these words. Thy word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Psalm 119, verse 105. And then Doug said this. He said, Leon, in your life, in your ministry, love the word, love the people. Love the word, love the people. Those are words that are not reserved just for me. Those are words for all the people of God. Love the word. Don't blow off what is God-breathed. Because God comes to you through Scripture. He comes to you and speaks to you and works in you, creating and sustaining faith. And it is in his word that God changes us from the inside out. So that by God's grace, our faith grows and faith results 
in loving the word and loving people. So may you, may you as you read God's love story for you, may you by the power of the Holy Spirit love the word and love the people. In the name of Jesus, amen. We continue as we collect the offering. God's word is clear that we cast our burdens, that we cast our troubles, that we cast our anxieties onto him and he carries them. God's word is clear that we should come to him in troubles and prayer and praise and thanksgiving. And that's exactly what we do at this point in the worship service. Um, this red book is in the atrium before and after worship services and you're always invited um, to write your prayers in there. And then we get the opportunity as a body of believers, uh, as, a blob, as a body of redeemed children of Christ to lift these prayers up. And so here are some of the prayers that have been written from this worship service. Praise the Lord for parents of 65 years of marriage, for a brother and family as they face a sister-in-law's back surgery, 
and, that be- and they begin treatment for a recently diagnosed cancer this week. Prayers for positive test results for a father. A prayer that it's been three years, yester- or three years today that my family lost a wonderful and giving husband, father, and papa. Um, our thoughts are with him. Um, our prayers will be with him always. May he rest in eternal peace. Um, and I'll add to that, knowing um, the promise of God is true that um, this father is with our father in heaven. Bless my friend in the hospital, dying of cancer. Thanks for a wonderful family and many blessings. Prayers for a co-worker who was just diagnosed with breast cancer. Prayers for my friend Gil and his family um, whose father is ill. Thank you for all the blessings placed in my life. Prayer for my daughter to have a more positive and respectful attitude. Thank you, God, for answers to a prayer. Prayers for health and healing to a husband and father as he undergoes cancer treatment. Prayers for a friend and her family dealing with their daughter's cancer diagnosis. We lift those prayers up, and as a church, we lift up um, a prayer of thanks for the installation of Pastor Rob um, this afternoon. We also lift up a prayer um, for um, Tim. Tim stands for Together in Missions. There's a Tim offering envelope in the pews around you. There is also an opportunity for you to be involved with the J2E3 conference that's coming up here in June. And that J2E3 um, conference will highlight how we are God's servants and missional in the community around us. So we invite you to to attend that conference. We also invite you um, to volunteer to serve at that conference. More information can be found out about missions, the mission summit coming up at the offering, I'm sorry, at the, in the back atrium after this worship service. I invite you to rise and we're going to take these prayers to our Lord. <clears throat> take a moment to calm your hearts, to calm your minds, um, to humble yourself. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in praise and adoration this morning. We come in to you with praise and adoration over the fact, Lord, that you are a God that is with us. You are a God that was with us from creation when you breathed life into us. And you're a God that is with us today. You're not a distant God. You're a God that dwells richly inside of each and every one of us. You're a God that meets us as you gift us with your word. I ask, Lord, that um, you increase faith in each and every one of us. You increase faith in us by, Lord, letting us cling to your promise. A promise that gives us value. That gives us value because, Lord, it states how we were created in your image. A promise, Lord, that um, when the world presses down on us and the world tells us we're not valuable, A promise, Lord, that gives us value because we were baptized in the same baptism as your son, Jesus Christ. And with that baptism, Lord, we are made masterpieces. Made masterpieces in your image. So I thank you, Lord, for a church full of masterpieces that are here bringing praise to you this morning. I ask, Lord, that you let us cling to the promise of your word, a word that lays out clearly that our sins are forgiven. And that our sins are not forgiven in an easy way, but they are forgiven in a costly way. A way that costed you, your son. And that through his death and resurrection, Lord, our sins are locked up in a tomb. And they are as far from us as the east is from the west. And that, Lord, we are forgiven and we are your children in your eyes. And I ask, Lord, that you let that redemptive lifestyle not be something that be kept to ourselves, but something that be shared with all of the people that we love. All of the people that we love because you command it. All the people that you have placed in our life, not by accident, but by purpose. And I ask, Lord, that you let our church have a heart that seeks, have a heart that desires, have a heart that longs for you. Lord, let us also trust in your word, in the promise of prayer. When you told us, Lord, 
this is how you want us to pray. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our sending. As God's family, we are called and gathered to worship, grow, and be sent to make a difference in the world for Christ. We are living on purpose. Go out into the world knowing who you are and whose you are. I know my place in his story. Amen. Amen.